Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily update for November 30th, 2021. Well, as I'm sure you're well aware, we're beginning to see a degree of panic spreading around the world with the discovery of the so-called Omicron uh, variant or mutation of the COVID-19. Uh, we're seeing actions being taken very quickly, uh, led initially by Boris Johnson of the United Kingdom, who shut down flights from Southern Africa. This is now spreading to many other countries that are, are uh, shutting down flights. Uh, the, the, the whole situation is moving out of control. And what we're seeing is the potential for new lockdowns, which would have a drastic effect on an already fragile economy. But I want to look at the deeper problem that we face here, because the problem is the way the pandemic and the, the approach to it has been politicized. That this has become a political football, and it's become that because people are suspicious of government. They're suspicious of what they hear in the media. They're suspicious of so-called authorities with good reason. So what's necessary is to have an open debate because an open debate has been suppressed between media censorship, between people who uh, won't listen to others uh, on either side of whether lockdowns, vaccinations, and so on. And there's a lot of misinformation out there. So in addressing this, the Schiller Institute has called upon uh, Dr. Joycelyn Elders of the Committee of the Coincidence of Opposites to put forward a call. And I want to introduce you to what she said because it's, it's extremely important. The full statement is available uh, on the SchillerInstitute.com website and there'll be a link to it at the bottom of the description page. But what she said in her statement, in her open letter, which is being circulated for signatures and already a number of prominent people have signed on, she starts by saying, I'm calling upon virologists and medical experts throughout the globe to undertake an international, coordinated, and integrated education campaign to establish a sane approach to deal with this and potentially future pandemics. Now, for those who don't remember the name, Joycelyn Elders is a former Surgeon General of the United States, and what she's responding to is the degree to which fear and panic create emotional reactions which make it so easy to politicize the disease. Of course, in this era of media narratives, of the so-called fact checkers, uh, and the control in the hands of people who have an agenda, it's hard to know what to trust. At the very beginning of the outbreak, Helga Zeppler-Rouche said that it's necessary to have modern health facilities and public health measures, measures in every country around the world. The reason being that Diseases spread, especially through populations with malnutrition, with bad medical capabilities or lack of medical capabilities, no clean water, no electricity, and that these diseases don't respect national boundaries. And so therefore, you can't just lock yourself into a room. You do have to take an aggressive approach. And this is what Dr. Elders is addressing here. But where does the problem come from? The tearing down of public health through privatization, through deregulation, which has turned the medical industry into a for-profit center for the globalist cartels, whether it's the insurance companies, whether it's big pharma, whether it's private hospitals. And we've, we've seen that Western nations were caught flat-footed because we've reduced so significantly the medical capabilities we once took for granted. So what you have to look at is this overall effect of, of deregulation and privatization. And add to that the role of Obamacare in attacking the medical profession and attacking our social safety net, uh, which is necessary to protect against in infectious disease. Now, I want to read a little more from Dr. Elder's letter. And I want you to think about it rather than just reacting because what she's calling for is what should have been done at the beginning. And instead, because of the political assault on, on particularly the, the president, Donald Trump, 
and the attacks on China, what we ended up with was a hodgepodge of, of truths and half-truths that were that lead to inconsistencies in practice that made it very easy for people to become suspicious of anything they were hearing. So what Dr. Elders is saying is that at this point, let's do what we should have done at the beginning. And here's what she said. Here are the things that, that uh, have to be discussed. What is public health? And how must we join forces to implement tried and tested public health measures including sanitation, clean water, and nutritious food, and the provision of preventative and ameliorative medicines, including vaccines, essential to defeat this pandemic. Secondly, she says, what is the comparative efficacy of the various vaccines and other measures now deployed in different nations and regions in preventing serious illness and death? Let's discuss them. That's what she's saying. Let's figure out what works and what doesn't work. Let's get a handle on this instead of running off half cocked. She goes on to then say, how do we provide adequate numbers of hospitals, health facilities, and medical professionals in every nation, including the systematic recruitment of youth community health workers to assist now as the, as the pandemic is brought under control? And she says, what the world now requires to address the ensemble of diseases we could be facing is the establishment of a modern healthcare system in every nation, including food, clean and safe water, electricity, decent housing, sanitation, roads, and other infrastructure. It's clear that this is what's lacking. What we're seeing now instead is an overwhelming of the healthcare system. Uh, for those who would deny the need for such a discussion, take a look at what's happening in Germany a modern economy, one of the strongest economies in the world, with ad potential access to incredible technology. There are three states in Germany right now that are adopting triage in the medical system because the hospitals are overwhelmed. They don't have enough rooms. The emergency centers are overwhelmed. And there's not enough medical personnel. More than 35,000 medical personnel have quit under the pressure they've faced uh, around the spread of the COVID-19. So this is an emergency. Whether you uh, agree or not, you, you have to look at these things and realize that once triage is adopted, what it means is that doctors are going to be forced to decide who will live and who will die. It's an enormous burden put on doctors, but it's also something that's unnecessary were we to undertake the measures that we should take. You wanna talk about an infrastructure bill? How about building new hospitals? We used to have a standard in the United States called the Hill-Burton standard, which was the number of hospital beds needed per 100,000 people. We're now almost 50% below what we had in the 50s, 60s, and 70s under Hill-Burton. And as a result, an, an, an infectious disease like COVID stretches the healthcare capability beyond the, the capacity to take care of every person who needs health care. So this debate, which is being called for by Dr. Elders, a rational discussion is essential. It's late. It's taken too long for this. And again, this goes back to the politicization of everything. Uh, tomorrow, for example, I'm going to talk about what's happening now with the media, where they're finally at least grudgingly admitted that maybe they got some things wrong on Russiagate, but no one's being held to account for it. As a nation and as a transatlantic civilization, the deterioration of genuine dialogue and discussion is one of the greatest threats. The United States was founded based on a series of meetings in Philadelphia around the Declaration of Independence and then the adoption of a constitution in which people engage in passionate debate for weeks and months on end to make sure we got things right. That's the minimum standard that we have to have. Now, under an emergency circumstance, you may not have months, but at least you ought to have the kinds of discussions that are required to make sure you get it right. So thanks for joining me today. Again, 
Go to the link at the bottom of the description box to get Dr. Elder's statement. Sign it if you wish, circulate it if you wish, take it to doctors, nurses, medical professionals you know. Let's get this started now. Thanks for joining me today. I will see you tomorrow.